little of our uh, favorite Stooges, the three Stooges here. We got uh, Bruss, Kelly, and Bean, of course, livening up math every day. So today we're going to be talking about applying the properties of rational exponents. Uh, the first thing you need to know are all these rules right here are rules that you already know. You already know the multiplication property. All we're going to do now is use them with exponents that are rational, a.k.a. exponents that are fractions. So when I have the same base, 5 and 5 is the same base, I add the exponents. 1 half plus 3 halves is 4 halves. So I have 5 to the 4 halves, and we know that 5 to the 4 over 2 is just 2. 5 squared is 25. All this is is simplifying, all right? Down here, we know power to power. The rule is the same. I multiply my exponents. So three fifths, a uh, three to the five halves, excuse me, to the second power. I'm going to multiply uh, five halves times two, and I'm going to get five. So now I have three to the fifth. And I know that three to the fifth is 243. All right, when I have a product to a power, I'm going to apply, I'm going to multiply every exponent in here. All right, by my exponent on the outside. So again, these are exponents of one. Now right now, you, a lot of you are probably saying, well, I should multiply 16 times nine first. Well, in some cases you can do that. I mean, you can always do it. But here's a good reason why you don't want to do that right away. So 16, one, time, one times one half is one half times nine to the one half, all right? I know that one half of 16 is Oh, excuse me, 16 to the 1 half power, that's the square root of 16, that's 4. I know that 3 uh, is the square root of 9, and I know that 4 times 3 is 12. All right? Negative exponents, remember, the negative tells you it doesn't like where it's currently at. If it's on the top of a fraction, it goes to the bottom. If I were on the bottom of a fraction it would go to the top. It doesn't like where it's at, so it has to change places. So this is currently on the top of a fraction in the numerator, so now I need to put it on the bottom, the denominator. Now it's happy where it's at. Remember, if I don't have anything in the numerator, I can always put a one. So now I have one, uh, 36 to the half, that's the square root of 36, which is six. So one over six. The quotient rule down here, the quotient rule. Same thing, same base, I subtract my exponents. Four and four is the same base, I subtract my exponents. Five halves minus one half, five halves minus one half is four halves, which again, that reduces to two, which again is 16. All right, this is quotient to a power, so I do every exponent. Remember these, if the power's not written, it's a one. So this is 27 to the one-third. This is 64 to the one-third. What is the cube root of 27? Well, that's three. The cube root of 64 is four. And this is kind of a new one. It's not really a rule, but it's uh, an exponent rule, but it's something you need to understand. When we combine like terms, we if we have the same variables to the same power, same variable to the same power, I can add the coefficients. So I have y to the one half, y to the one half. I'm going to add two plus negative five is negative three, and I keep my term. All right, that's like terms. You already know what those are. Um, you do it a lot, but now they're getting a little bit trickier to see. And with all these exponents, so I wanted to make sure we were clear on that. All right, so let's take a look at a few here. So this is a division rule. So I had the same base. I subtract the exponents. Two-fifths minus four-fifths. Again, now, a lot of you are going to get real frustrated with these fractions. Just put in your calculator. Two-fifths minus four-fifths. That is negative two-fifths. And I can't have a negative exponent. It's on the top, so it's going to go to the bottom. All right. Over here, I have the same base, so I'm going to add the exponents. When I multiply, I actually add. So now I have 120, negative 2 fifths plus 2 fifths, that's actually 0. And then I have a negative exponent. I'm just going to move this right up now. So 120 to the 0 times 7 to the 3 fourths. Anything to the 0 power is 1, 
So 1 times 7 to the 3 fourths is 7 to the 3 fourths. All right. Down here, we have a couple of variables. So remember, I just want to work with what I know. Now, I, I like to put 1's here so that I know this. So I'm doing, I have a division rule here, 2 fifths minus 1. All right, 2 fifths minus 1 is negative 3 fifths. So I have x to the negative 3 fifths. And then 1 minus 1, negative 1 third. Remember, that's 1 minus negative 1 third. That's like minus, a, my, a negative is like plus. That's y to the 4 thirds. All right. Can't have negative exponents. So y to the 4 thirds over x to the 3 fifths. All right. Over here, I'm adding, and you can see here I have like terms. I have the same uh, variable to the same exponent. So I'm going to add the coefficients. 4 plus 5 is 9x to the 2 thirds. Again, nothing changes with my variable and my exponent. It's exactly what I started with the first time. All right, a lot of people want to add the 2 thirds and the 2 thirds. Remember, you only add exponents when you are multiplying. All right, so now we're going to switch it over to radicals. Remember, we've talked about the correlation between a, a rational number or an irrational exponent and a radical. We've talked about that last time. So now we need to know how to simplify these radicals. Simplest form of radicals means there's no perfect nth powers as factors, and any denominator has been rationalized. All right, so let's take a look at this. 135, I'm going to take the, thir the third root of 135. Now I'm going to come over here, I'm going to have 135, and I'm going to do a prime factorization of this. So I know that right away, uh, 45 times 3. All right, 45 times 3 is 135. I know that 45 is 9 times 5 times 3. I like to write the whole thing out every time so I don't get lost. I know that 9 is 3 times 3 times five times three. So if you go back and you put in uh, three times three times five times three, we're going to get 135. All right, so now here's the deal. This little root is going to tell us how many of the same thing we need to take out. All right, so I have three. I need to find three pair. I need to find three of exactly the same thing. We'll have one, two, and three. So I can take a three out. When it comes out, it's just one by itself. Can I take the 5 out? No, there's not 3 of them. I need to take 3 out. There's only one of them, so I'm going to leave it in. And don't forget, very important, you need to put the, the third root there. All right? It's very similar. If I had the square root of 16, I don't write the 2, okay? But I need two pairs that are the same. 16 is 4 times 4. I have two of the exact same number. It comes out. Remember, if I'm done with everything inside, the radicals no, no longer need it. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Negative 81, and I want the third root of negative 81. So the first thing I'm going to do over here is I'm going to do 81, and I know that's 9 times 9. And I know this 9 is 3 times 3, and I know this 9 is 3 times 3. All right, so to get it negative, I'm going to put as many negatives as I can. A negative times a negative is a positive. All right, so now that's work. So now I have negative 8, third root of negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times 3. I need 3 of exactly the same number. Negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. So I'm going to take a negative 3 out, multiply by what's outside, negative 8. And I want to do the third root. And what's left? I have this 3 all by itself inside. So now I'm going to multiply. Negative 3 times negative 8 is 24, third root of 3. All right? So let's take a look at this one, all right? 192. So the first thing I'm going to do is 192. I'm going to write it over here. That's, I'm going to start with 2 times 96. So then 96 is 2 times 48. All right? 48 is 2 times 24. 24 is 2 times 12. And then 12 is 2 times 6. Now here's the thing. I need 5 of the same one, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have 5 twos. I'm going to take it out. All right, so now what's left? 6. Well, 6 is just 2 times 3. 
That's not, there's nothing there. So I'm going to leave it in there. So I have six inside. All right. Now the other thing we need to worry about are these letters a to the fourth a to the fourth is a times a times a times a do i have five of the same one no so i have to leave all of them inside so my answer is two fifth root of six a to the fourth all right so now we have some properties of radicals much like we have properties of exponents we have the same thing here all right <clears throat> excuse me so First one is the product property. I can do, I can go one of two ways. If I have uh, the fourth root of 120, I can split it into two new roots, 12 times 10, because 12 times 10 is 120, I can do that. Also, if I have the same root, I can multiply these. So 12 times 10 is 120. I can put it all under one radical, all right? So I'm going to multiply these. I want to do the third root, all right? And I want to do the third root. That means I can put them under the same thing here. Now, here's the tendency. A lot of you are going to want to multiply 12 times 18 in your calculator. But you know you're going to have to break that down. So instead of breaking it down, see, I'm making that a bigger number. So instead of making that a bigger number, I'm just going to leave it. Now I can do 12. 12 is 4 times 3. And 18 is 9 times 2. All right, <coughs> I need three of the same. I have three two, so I can take a two out. And I have three three, so I can take a three out. So there's nothing left on the inside of my cube root. So I have no cube root, so two times three is six, and we are done. All right, same thing goes with the quotient property. If I have everything under one radical, I can separate them and have the same root of both or vice versa down here. I have the fourth root and the fourth root, so I can actually divide. 80 divided by five is 16, all right? So we want the, excuse me, the fourth root of 16, all right? The fourth root of 16, well, 16, as we know, is four times four, which is two times two and two times two. So the fourth root of 16 is actually two, all right? And much like earlier, we can combine like terms. This is a lot of fancy things, but the key is this. Again, it has to have the same root, the same radical, same root, same radical. Then you can do whatever it is, add or subtract the coefficients. So in this one, I have the fifth root of G and the fifth root of G. So I'm going to add 6 plus 5 is 11, fifth root of G. And there you have it, all right? All right, so we have some here. Let's do example 8 here. So the fourth root of 96 end of the seventh. So 96. All right, so that's 2 times 48. 2 times 48 is 2 times 24. 2 times 2 times 24 is 2 times 12. And I'm looking for four of the same. 2 times 2 times 2, 12 is 2 times 6. There we go. 1, 2, 3, 4 of the same. So I know I can take a 2 out. All right, and I know that 6 is going to have to stay in. Now let's talk about end of the seventh. There's a couple ways you can do this, all right? One way is right now, I, I'm going to draw them all out. Four, five, six, seven. I know that when I have four of the same, one, two, three, four, I can take them out. So 2n goes out, all right? And how many are left inside? End of the third. Remember, the number I take out I, is just 1n, because it's the fourth root of n. Four of them make up one on the outside, all right? Now, that's all good, but it gets a little, you know, nasty. So what you really want to get in the habit of doing is looking and making sense of this, all right? So seven. Well, I'm looking for how many can I take? A, I can take four. Seven minus four is three, right? So I'm going to have three leftovers, okay? And I have four, one on the outside. If you think uh, this is a one... Here's a way to check. 1 times 4 is 4, plus 3 is 7. There you have it. So I'm going to pause this. I want you to try these other ones real quick. All right, just do your best. If they're not be perfect, then go back and see what you made, uh, if you got them right or made some mistakes. All right, so if you see this first one right here, we have uh, the like terms. So I combine negative 3 and negative 3 is negative 6. 
down here they were a little bit trickier. The first thing you need to see on this one is that you could reduce 32. All right, and you can saw there is 32 was two, uh, five two, so I took one of them out, one left in. So three times two was six, four through to two, minus two, four through to two. Same like terms, six minus two is four, four through to two. Over here, 128, you can see it breaks down. I took a two out here, all right, because I needed three, I saw a three, so I did that here. Then I saw the fours, I still had another group of three, uh, uh, so I took another two out here, and I had one little two left over, so it stayed in. And then on eight of the six, well, I need three, you know, eight of the six is eight of the third times eight of the third, because I add exponents, right? So I have eight of the third, I can take one of those out, and eight of the third, I can take one of those out, so that's two a's, so a squared. B to the second, I need at least three of the same thing to come out, and there's not three, so I leave it in. So then I combine them, negative 20, a squared, third root of 2b squared. So you try these, pause the video, and see how you do. All right, so let's take a look over here. 4x to the 4 fifths, nothing I can do here, but I'm going to multiply because it's a power to a power. So 3 fifths times 10 thirds is 2. So 2 to the second. 6 over 25 times 10 thirds is actually 4 fifths. All right. So now 2 squared is 4. So now I have like terms. 4 plus 4 is 8 x to the 4 fifths. And we're done with that one. Over here we got 486. Let's break 486 down. That is 2 times 243. And that is 2 times 3 times 81. And I know that that means 81 is 9 times 9. And then 9 is 3 times 3. And 9 is 3 times 3. So I need 4 the same. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I can take a 3 out. And what do I have left inside? I have one three and a two, so that's a six. All right, now I need four, eight, so I have eight of the six. I have, definitely have four, right? So I have six minus four is one, so I can, or excuse me, six minus four is two. So I have two left inside, and I could take one out, all right? If you don't believe me, eight of the six is the same thing as eight of the fourth times eight of the second. That is one of them on the outside. Right, and the, that little bugger has to stay in. So there you have it, all right? So this, uh, good luck on the mastery check. I'm gonna show you a little video clip, uh, one of my f other favorite SNL commercials, Saturday Night Live commercials ever, with a very famous football player in it. It's pretty funny. Good luck on the packet, I'll see you on the flip side.